Hey everybody, let's get started with, I think, number one would be a good place to start. Uh, here we go. Alright, so let's write this as x to the ninth dy dx equals y, I like it that way. dy over y equals dx over x to the ninth when we separate the variables. That'll be uh, dy over y equals x to the negative 9 dx. Antiderivative, natural log of y equals, let's see, we're going to have to subtract 1, well, if this is a function and we take its derivative and we get negative 9, then we must have started with a negative 8 exponent. Uh, to cancel that out when we take the derivative, we'll put a negative 1 eighth, so when we take the derivative, we wind up with x to the negative 9 plus c. Uh, then we'll exponentiate both sides, meaning we'll make both sides the power of e. When we do that here, we get just y. On this side, we get e to the negative 1 eighth to the negative, let's say negative 1 eighth x to the negative 8 power plus c. Let's call it c1 because we'll rewrite it as y equals c times e to the negative 1 eighth x to the negative 8. Okay. If you need a reminder of why uh, we have a c times e when just before we had plus c in the exponent, uh, come ask me, I will be glad to explain that. Let's rewrite this as negative 5 plus x dy dx equals negative 5y. Let's separate the variables. I'm going to make it dy over y equals um, negative 5 plus, oh, let's see, it would be dx over that. Over, we'll make it actually it's negative 5 dx over negative 5 plus x. So you take the answer derivative here, you get the natural log of y. To the answer derivative of this, uh, we'll just take negative 5 times, let's try the natural log of negative 5 plus x plus c. Let's see, if we take the uh, antiderivative, or take the derivative of this, do we wind up with that? We get negative 5 times 1 over negative 5 plus x times the derivative of the inside function, which is just 1. So yeah, that works. Okay. Um, and then we'll exponentiate both sides. We get y equals e to the negative 5 times the natural log of negative 5 plus x plus c. And remember there's a property of exponents that says if we have a, uh, a number constant times the natural log, we can make it it's the same as saying the natural log of this thing to this power. So we have y, just a little arrow here, y equals e to the natural log of negative 5 plus x to the negative 5 power um, plus c. Okay, so y equals, I guess I should have said, let's say, c times e to the natural log of that. But if we have e to the natural log, we just, it just cancels out, and we're left with negative 5 plus x to the negative 5 power. And that'll do it. So that's our answer we'd put right here. And differential equation that models the following verbal statement. The rate of change of n with respect to t, that is what we call the n dt, is proportional to n. Is proportional to means equal to some constant times whatever the thing is. Is proportional to. So if this is proportional to this, it means that this is equal to some constant times this. So we wrote that down. Uh, we're going to use the initial values to find the particular solution. So to find the particular solution, we're going to have to find the general solution. So we're going to have to uh, separate the variables and uh, find the antiderivative of both sides. So we'll make it... Um, let's see, make sure we get this... Uh, yeah, dn over n equals k dt. Right, we'll take the antiderivative and we get the natural log of n equals uh, kt plus c. Because right, k is just some constant. It could be 5, could be 4. If I took the anti antiderivative of 4 with respect to t, to, uh, t I would just get 4t plus c. And if I took the derivative of kt, which is just some constant times t, I would get just k. Uh, exponentiate both sides. We get n equals 
C E to the K T. Just kind of shortcutting it a little bit there. But here's my general solution. Uh, and they tell me this. It's very convenient that T equals 0 because now I can say that N is 24. That's equal to uh, C, which I don't know, times E to the K times 0. That 0 is nice because K times 0 is 0. E to the 0, as with anything to the 0, is 1. So we know that C equals 24. So now we know a little bit more about this equation and its particular solution. Now they tell us again something for T, something for N. N is 40. We know C now is 24 times E to the K, which we don't know, times T, which is 4. And now we just need to solve for K. So we'll divide both sides by 24. Ooh, that's not good. Let's just make it uh, 40 over 24 for the moment equals e to the 4k. Okay, how do we solve this? Take the natural log of both sides. So we have the natural log of 40 over 24 equals uh, natural log, so that'd be 4k. Divide by 4, so we have 1 fourth, the natural log of 40 over 24. That is what k is. Uh, so now we know what k is, so we can plug that in for k. We can plug in 24 for c. And we can figure out what is n when t is 10. So we have n, which we don't know, but we know that this is 24. e to the, uh, what are we plugging in, 10 times 1 fourth the natural log of 40 over 24. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. And... So n is equal to whatever that is. So we'll just go ahead and throw that in here. 24 uh, times e to the power of 10 uh, over 4 times the natural log of 40 over 24. Let's see if that's going to follow the order of operations correctly. 10 fourths times natural log of 40 over 24. We'll close that parentheses and should be good to go. 86.07. There we go. To the... Oh, to two four decimal places. I should have paid attention to some direc directions there. So, 0663. 663. That's it. Um, let's make sure we answer the, the questions. So we just were supposed to find that, and we did, and we're moving on. I'm going to solve this differential equation. Of course, I like to write it as dy dx equals square root of x over negative 7y. That's going to give me, when I separate the variables, negative 7y dy equals root x dx. Take the antiderivative. We're going to get uh, negative 7 halves y squared equals... Uh, two-thirds x to the three-halves plus c. Okay. And if we want to make this a little easier to look at, we can multiply both sides by six to cancel out the two and the three. That'll give us negative 21y squared. When we multiply this by six, we'll multiply seven by three. And here we'll get four x to the three-halves plus c. Um, and since y is squared, and, and solving for y would involve having the square root, um, we'll just leave it this way. Okay, So that's what we would write right there. we we'll sketch a few solutions of the differential equation. Okay, so remember, a, um, a differential equation is dy dx. That is uh, one way to say the derivative of y with respect to x. So... What does the derivative tell us about a function? It tells us the slope. Okay, so if I were to pick any point here, any x and y, say um, the point three three, uh, this differential equation with that x and y should tell me the slope of the function. So uh, put in three, you get negative three over put three in there for y. Negative three over three is negative one. So at the point, oh, I guess this is the wrong scale here. 
uh, would be 3, and 3 would be up here, and the slope would be negative 1, and we show a slope of negative 1. Um, if we tried 1, 1, 2, 2, anything where the x and y are the same, we get slopes of negative 1. That's why the, we have these slopes of negative 1 here. We have these slopes of positive 1 over here. right? So like any graph that uh, was a graph of y um, should have those slopes, and it should have any slope uh, at any point that the slope field shows. So if it goes to this point, it should have this slope, then it'll go through this point, which means it should have this slope, and then once it gets over to the uh, y-axis, it should be a zero slope, and we just keep going and keep following the slopes that we see, and we find, well, this is pretty much a circle. We can do another one, right? It could go through here, and it would have to follow these slopes. As I keep drawing, I just keep matching my graph to have the same slopes that the slope field shows. And uh, there's a couple solutions. And then we'll call it a few. Okay. So now we have a, a couple solutions. We've sketched a couple, just like it asked us to do. And then it wants us to uh, find the general solution. So we'll separate the variables. We'll wind up with uh, y dy equals negative x dx. We'll take the antiderivative of both sides. We'll get 1 half y squared equals negative 1 half x squared plus c. And then we can multiply by 2 on both sides. We would get y squared equals negative x squared plus c. And y squared plus x squared equals something is the equation of a circle. Um, so kind of reaffirms what we already saw here uh, by drawing the solutions, sketching the solutions. Okay, so, um, here, this one I think of as the shell method right away, because I see the 2 pi there, and if you remember, when we take a rectangle and we rotate it to make a shell, This rectangle is so thin, it's like when we take the surface area, in quotes, surface area, of this top part here, of this uh, kind of a washer shape on the top, and we multiply it by the height of this shell, uh, that, that area, that quote area, gets so small uh, that we're pretty much finding the area of just like this razor thin edge. And the area, it's like, finding the area of that is like finding the area of this line. The area of this line, since it's just a line, is pretty much the length of the line. There's no second dimension here, okay? And so there's essentially no second dimension here on the, on the top of this thing. It's just a, almost a, just a, a razor-thin um, top edge here. So the surface area then becomes basically the circumference of this circle multiplied by the height gives us the volume, which would essentially be the surface area of this like piece of paper almost. Okay, only this thing is like trillions and trillions of times thinner than a piece of paper. Uh, so I see, I think of that circumference part. I think of the circumference. multiplied by the height, well, 2 pi r, right, well that, that is the circumference, and there's the height, right? so I see that 2 pi r right away, and that reminds me shell method, okay, otherwise, we have the either disk method, which would be finding the volumes of a bunch of disks, or the, sh the uh, washer method, which is finding the volume of a bunch of washers, okay, I see pi r squared, I see pi r squared, here I have just straight pi r squared. No fancy stuff, just a simple disk, right? Pi r squared times the, the thickness, dx. That gives me the volume of a disk, right? And this, I circled the wrong part, really. This integral, an integral in general, is an infinite sum. The infinite sum of what? Of a bunch of uh, area, volumes of disks, okay? Uh, and the volume of the disk would be pi times r squared times the thickness, okay? So pi r squared, no fancy stuff, that reminds me that's the disk method, okay? And here I have, uh, well, if I was going to find the volume of this washer, 
I would take the the volume of the the larger washer minus the volume of this of the, well the what's called the area. I take the area of the larger circle minus the area of the smaller circle. This little guy right here. And I would subtract that little area, and so I would have pi times the big R squared. That gave me the area of the big circle minus pi little r squared. That would give me the area of the smaller circle. I'd subtract it and find the area and multiply it by the thickness there. I can just take out the pi, and I'm left with big R squared minus little r squared. And there you have that, big R squared minus little r squared. So this is the washer method, where I have the, this kind of represents the big area minus the little area. That's not what I wanted at all. Oh, no, I'm really in trouble. Here we go. Okay. Oh, this is my original version where I forgot to leave space for each of these questions, but uh, they are the questions nonetheless. So you're going to find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by the graphs, these graphs, about the line y equals 18. So we have y equals x squared. That's not quite good enough. y equals x squared. Um, this guy's going to have x-intercepts at 0 and 8. It's going to be upside down. It's going to open down. So we're going to take this region that's bounded, trapped by these two graphs. We're going to rotate it around y equals 18. That's probably a line that either touches or is just above this region here. Um, let's figure out the highest point will be here in the middle. The middle will be 4. So if we plug in 4, uh, that's going to be 32 minus 16. So that would be 16. So 18 is, just for the sake of making this picture, 18 is just a little bit above that. So when I rotate this, this shape around this axis, I'm going to take these little rectangles, I'm going to rotate them around, and I'm going to wind up getting these washers, right? So I need pi and a to be a big R squared and a little r squared. D, well, this is an important part to, uh, important point to make. Is it dx? Well, this, this represents the thickness of the washer, and the thickness is, you know, the difference between this x and this x, right? Not a y value and a y value. It's the, the difference in these two x values. So it is dx. Indeed, it is dx. Uh, so um, that's the thickness, and then we're going to find a formula for finding the big radius. That would be from here to here, and then a formula for finding the little radius. Let's color code that with a purple. That would be the radius from here to here. And little r squared. Okay, so f pi times. Okay, let's mm, maybe let's figure out our radius first. So that'd be from here to here. Uh, what would be that radius? Well, from here to here is 18, and from here to here is what? It's uh, y equals x squared. So if I took this y value of 18 and subtract this that's given by x squared, that should give me this distance. So I'll take 18 minus x squared. It's my big radius, and I'll square that. Okay. And what about this other guy? This one from here to there, this minus little r squared. This little r is going to be uh, 18 minus this y value from here to there. That's given by 8x minus x squared. So I'll take 18 minus uh, 8x minus x squared okay. times dx from a to b. What's a and what's b? Well, think about what we're doing here. We're adding up the volumes of a bunch of washers. Um, and so our limits of integration are going to be where we find our first washer to where we find our last washer. So that would be from here to here. Right? What x value is this and what x value is this? Well, that would be where these two cross each other. So we could just set uh, x squared equal to 8x minus x squared. And we get uh, 2x squared minus 8x equals 0. I'll uh, take out a 2x. We're left with x minus 4 equals 0. So at x equals 0 and x equals 4. Those are the two places where these guys intersect. So we'll find 
washers from 0 to 4. That's the beginning and ending of that region that's bounded by those two graphs. Okay. Um, maybe now I should bring in some extra space and run out of space here. Uh, so let's, you know, square this out and keep going. So pi times the integral from 0 to 4. Uh, we'll square this out, we get uh, 18 times 18 through 24 uh, minus 36x squared plus x to the fourth minus uh, Let's see, that's going to be 18 minus 8x plus x squared squared. Uh, yeah, I was going to multiply that out. Uh, so we got 324 minus 36x squared plus x to the fourth minus, we'll multiply this together, we x to the fourth. 16x to the third. Uh, let's see. 36 minus 16x squared. Uh, 36 minus 64. 28x squared. Okay. This is fine. Zero to four. So we got three twenty-four minus three twenty. Well, maybe we'll start with the x to the highest power. So we got negative x to the fourth. Well, we've got x to the fourth minus x to the fourth is zero x to the fourth. That's nice. So we have uh, negative negative sixteen x to the third. So positive sixteen x to the third. Uh, we we'll go to the squares. We got negative thirty-six x squared and twenty-eight negative twenty-eight x squared. We're going to add that. Uh, twenty-eight minus thirty-six. Negative eight. So minus eight x squared. Um, let's see, plus two eighty-eight x. And three twenty-four minus three twenty-four. That cancels. So this is kind of nice. Pi times, well, I guess we're going to take the antiderivative right now, so we'll go ahead and do that. Let's see, so this would be negative 4x to the 4th minus 8 thirds x to the 3rd plus uh, 144x squared. Uh, I'm going to take that from 0 to 4. So we plug in 4, we plug in 0, and we subtract, except when we plug in 0, that part's going to go away. So we really just need to plug in 4. But pi times, uh, let's see, negative 4 times 4 to the 4th minus 8 thirds times 4 to the 3rd plus 144 times 4 squared. we have negative, it's going to be pretty big, 4 to the 5th, 1024, minus 64 times 8 over 3, five twelve over 3, Plus 144 times 16. 2,304. Uh, so then we'll get uh, common denominators. Three 
2,304. Over three thousand and seven two minus five hundred and twelve plus six thousand nine hundred and twelve. So we have four th no, nine thousand no, nine thousand four hundred and seventy two pi over three and hundred times division by three. It's not. So 9,472 over 3 times pi. Alright, so I suspected there was a mistake here. I traced it back to when I expanded this guy. Maybe you caught it. Um, there should be not negative 28x squared, but plus 100x squared. Plus 100x squared. So when we have negative 36x squared minus 100x squared, we should have negative... 136x squared. Negative 136x squared. Uh, so that would be minus 136 uh, over 3. Uh, so when we come to this part here, this should be 136. And 136 times 4 cubed. Eight thousand seven hundred and four. Eight thousand seven hundred and four. Uh -huh, negative eight thousand seven hundred and four. So, all that's over three. We found the common denominator. That should be fine. 3,072 minus 8,704 plus 6,912. 1,280 pi over 3. 1,280 pi over 3. So, watch yourself on those small mistakes. Took me a while to figure out what my mistake was. Uh, basically, when I expanded out, I got a negative 64x squared when I should have got a positive 64x squared. So, silly me. There's the area, or the, uh, the volume, 1,280 pi over 3. Alright, so, now, let's see, we'll lock this, get all of this stuff and get rid of it, and make room for this problem. So we'll find the volume of the solid generated by the region bounded by these graphs around the x-axis. Okay, so let's get a feel for what these graphs look like. Okay, negative x squared plus 4. Let's see, so that's going to have... Uh, it's, a ne it's a parabola that opens down... Uh, x-intercepts at negative 2 and 2, um, and y equals 0 is the x-axis, so we're rotating this around the x-axis. Uh, I think it'd be a little easier to take this area, and just or that volume, and just multiply it by 2. Just multiply that volume by 2. Okay, so we will, um, since the region touches the, the uh, axis of rotation, all the way across, there's no washers, just straight disks, we'll do pi times the definite integral from 0 to 2, we'll multiply that by 2, um, and the radius of a disk, of a single disk, well that would just be the distance from here to there, so that would be negative x squared plus 4. That's the radius, we square it, and as simple as that. So we have 2 pi, 2 pi, times, uh, we're still taking this integral here, we'll multiply this out, we get x to the 4th minus 8x squared uh, plus 16 dx. We get 
2 pi, take the antiderivative now, that's going to be 1 fifth x to the fifth minus uh, 8 thirds x to the third plus 16x, taking that from 0 to 2. We like that because we plug in the 0, that part cancels out, so all that we're left with is just when we plug in 2, whatever we get there. So 2 pi times 32 over 5 minus, uh, let's see, 8 times 8 is 64 over 3 plus 32. 30, 32, yeah. 32 over 1. So we'll get a common denominator of 15. We'll uh, get that rectangle going again. So we have 2 pi times, this times 3, 32 times 3, 96 over 15, minus 64 times 5, 320 over 15, plus 32 times 15, 480 over 15, so then we add all those together, multiply by 2 pi, Let's see, 96 minus 320 plus 480, 256 over 15, 256 uh, over 15 times 2 pi. So let's just make this fast, times 2, 512 pi over 15. So, 512 pi over 15. And we'll get rid of this stuff here. Move on to the next one. Uh, using the shell method, set up and evaluate the integral that gives the volume of this, uh, the generated by revolving this region around the plane, uh, this region around the y-axis. So, we have uh, 10x minus x squared, that would have intercepts at 0, and at 10, uh, x equals 0, that would be the y-axis, and y equals 25, that would be probably right here. We're going to take this region here. We should figure out exactly where they intersect, because we're going to take these shells, like like a rectangle like this and rotate it around the y-axis. Right, that's going to make, uh, when we add up all the volumes of all those shells, that will give us the volume of our solid. So we're going to want to figure out where does it start and where does it end, right? This would be where they intersect. So we'll just take, uh, well maybe over here, 10x minus x squared and set it equal to 25. So we get uh, x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 0. We get x minus 5, x minus 5. So uh, intersects right there at x is 5. Okay, so integral is going to go from 0 to 5 because that is where the region begins and ends. That's where all of our shells are going to be generated from that region. Um, we're going to have 2 pi r h, right? Uh, the radius is pretty simple, though it, it kind of tricks people, okay? The radius is just from here to there, from here to there. What is that distance? Well, we've been calling it x for forever. The radius is x. What's the height? The height is actually from here to there, so it's the difference between this line and this graph right there. What is that? Well, that would be 25, whatever, 25 minus this right here, uh, which is 10x minus x squared. Okay, so That's 2 pi r h and dx. Yes, it is dx because the thickness of these shells is a difference in x from this x to this x, dx. Right, change in x. Okay, so 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 5 of, let's see, we're going to wind up with x to the 
third. Let me distribute this x, and all is said and done. Um, we're going to get minus 10x squared plus 25x dx. And here we come at the rectangle again. 2 pi. We can go ahead and take the antiderivative. It's going to be 1 fourth x to the fourth minus 10 thirds x to the third plus 25 over 2 x squared. Evaluate from 0 to 5, 2 pi times, uh, let's see, put a 5 in there, we're going to have 5 to the 4th over 4 minus 10 times 125, I happen to know what that is off the top of my head, plus uh, 25 times 25 over 2. Mm -hmm. 2 pi times, let's see, 5 to the 4th, 625 over 4, minus 1,250 over 3, plus, that's going to be 625 as well. That would be the same as 5 to the 4th, so over 2, 2 pi times, I'm going to find a common denominator of, of 12, I guess, and when we do that and all said and done, we get 625 over 12, multiply that by 2 pi, 2 and 12 cancel, we're left with 625 pi over 6, yeah, 625 pi over 6. For this one, we take 